Welcome to the Valve Studio for January 18th, 2017. This is an update on the Faraday Coil Winder. I'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and show you the changes I made in the last couple of months. They involve both software and hardware, and I worked on this for a couple of days this week and got the uh, software tuned up. So the first thing I want to show you over here is I have put a geared stepper motor on the spindle. And the reason why I did that was was the, uh, let's see if I can get this camera over here a little bit. The reason why I put a uh, stepper motor on the spindle was the, um, the stepper motor that I had there was this regular NEMA 17 and had no holding torque because on the Gerbil Shield, not the Gerbil Shield, uh, when a Gerbil is running on this little board that I have, when you're not driving the motors, it disables the, the, uh, the driver so the motor is free to spin and that will cause some trouble in the turns, to have the turns correct. Plus that thing had no torque when I, you know, stepper motors, the faster you run them, the less torque they have. So this one has a lot of torque and it runs sufficiently fast. And with this guy, I can, I'll be able to easily wind on, uh, you know, a 16, 14 gauge wire onto a, onto a spool. So that's what I did here. The same setup is going on over here. I still have the same switches. This is a regular um, NEMA 17 stepper on a, a lead screw. And this thing over here, this is called the, um, it's a Keys CNC version board. I don't have the other board here. But uh, after playing with this board for a while, I've, I've burned out two of them. And they have a really horrible power supply design in them. And in fact, you have to power it up a certain way. Otherwise, the, uh, the Arduino that's on there won't, won't run correctly. So you have to plug in the USB first and then plug in the power to the stepper motors. And I've blown out the uh, voltage regulators. They start smoking. And I've also blown out motor drivers on this thing. Uh, I would not recommend this. It was a very inexpensive thing I bought on AliExpress. I got the the the, uh, the baseboard uh, three motor drivers the A4988 uh, motor drivers the Allegro ones and and I think it's an Arduino um, micro I got all three of those for about twenty one dollars and I've had nothing but problems with that and <laughs> I'm going to stick with this because I've got it running now um, but when I do do a revision on my coil winder I'm definitely not going to do it this way. Um, I still will use a, the Gerbil because um, it has version 1.1 actually did a lot of changes to it and um, I can now jog which is critical for coil winding. I'll show you that in just a minute. Um, other changes I made, I had a really crappy, um, uh, was it, this is an x-axis uh, travel down here. I replaced it with a eight millimeter rod. I haven't cut off the end over here so you can see the end. And then I also worked on a, on a, f a feeder spindle, which I found these plastic pulleys in the shower section at, at the Home Depot. And so I just printed this up and here's a little cable tensioner. Um, but this thing goes pretty well back and forth. And I have five switches in here. These two, we're gonna move this thing back and forth. This one here, um, we'll rotate the spindle when I got it going, and this is the um, uh, this is the halt. This puts Gerbil into halt, and then this one puts it back into run. And then down here, I have a this is a, a, a step counter for exercising. I took the, um, the the mechanism out of it, and the one that has a little spring-loaded switch in it, and then I have it running up here to a. Um, uh, do an intrusion magnetic, it's basically a reed switch. And then I super glued a, 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 a strong magnet onto my, onto my chuck here. So whenever it goes around, you can see that it kind of counts up. Okay, so there's a, there's a count there and you can kind of see that it, it counts. Okay, and then just to zero. This is my fail safe counter. Um, sure, I could put an indexer on this and also have, you know, Gerbil tells me how many times I've rotated this but um, I went ahead and put this on here so that uh, so that I would have fail safe. If, if, all, if all fails, at least I know where I am when I'm buying my, my spool. 
Okay, some other things. Um, this is advertised as a 5.18 to 1 gear ratio. And I don't think it's exactly that because when I put in all the parameters in Gerbo for the uh, millimeters per, no, steps per millimeter, um, I'm off. I'm off by just a hair. And when you're going to rotate this thing, you know, thousands of times, you, you'll get off by almost a half a turn. Now, you know, it's not really that important if you kind of think about it, because you're going to know where you are when you're doing your turns, because you want all your turns to end up on the same side of the spool. But it is kind of important, because the reason why I'm using Gerbil on this thing is that I'm synchronizing the rotation while I'm also, um, see if I can do this, <laughs> just like this. <laughs> so I'm spinning the, uh, the, the spindle, and I'm also, these, these things are synchronized. So if this spindle is off, then the whole thing is going to be messed up and my, my wires won't lay down just right where I want them. I fussed with this for a while and I actually figured out the, the Gerbil setting at running up to like 2,000 turns and I'm, I get it right on the money. It's not quite 5.18 to 1. It's something else. Uh, the This thing is also horrendously noisy. I got this, uh, this I got on eBay. And I, this, this uh, planetary gear in here, I don't know if it's, it's lubricated correctly or it's machined pretty poorly because it's really quite noisy and it grinds a lot. When I'm running this pretty slow, it grinds a really a lot. When you get it kind of going, it, you know, it's okay. Um, it also, the bearing in the end of this thing has a little bit of play in it. And I think that that's going to be a problem. But in, if I'm actually winding very large uh, bobbins, I'll run this over here and run it. I have a a space here for uh, one of those 608ZZ bearings, and and it has an eight millimeter shaft hole in it. And I can just stick it in here, and so I can have my my uh, my threaded um, uh, spindle holder. What do they call that thing? Uh, I don't know what to call it. But the 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 bobbin that's on there, <clears throat> I can have it run over and be supported on both sides. So that's still going to work over here. All right, let's go ahead and plug this thing in. We'll get it going. So, like I said, you got to plug in the you got to plug in the USB first, which is going there, and then you plug in the the power. I'm running this on 24 volts. That was actually a critical decision. I was running it on about 18 volts, but I found that 24 worked a lot better. All right, so what happens is on Gerbil has an updated way it reports a lot of its status. So I end up writing um, some machine manip manipulation in Python. It opens a serial port and it decodes the status messages coming back. And it also has a display here. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'll go ahead and run that here. Just the machine itself. So what it does is it goes in and opens up all the... It opens up everything and it's actually um, uh, doing status continually. About uh, Gerbil recommends to not pull the board more than uh, four times a second. I, I think that's what I'm doing. And and then I have um, this is a you know this is a simple text interface that runs in Python. If you hit a question mark, it shows you the keys. Excuse me. This is the help menu here. Okay. So the first one I can do is a capital D for debug. Okay, so this is showing you down here the messages that are coming back. And you can see that it's this is what the stream of the messages are. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. And then if I want to jog it, I can jog it from the keyboard or I can jog it from the actual machine. So if we come over here, you can kind of see that, that this button pulls it that way. This one you know, pushes it away. This one turns my, you can kind of hear how noisy that is. Okay, and also you see that the counter, was the counter counting up? Yeah, so the counter's counting up there. And if you look at, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the halt button. You can see in the upper right here, in the upper left corner, I'm, at, I'm an idle. If I hit the halt button, 
it goes into hold, which is the gerbil mode, so it's not going to do anything now. And then when you're in hold, you can go ahead and hit the green button again, and it will on, on this side, and it will put it back in the, into idle mode. That's how you can run it from from here. Um, the other thing that it, it actually does is when you're when you're spinning the spindle, it actually moves this axis. This is x axis, and this is my uh, we just call this my turns axis. When you're running this button, the green button, and spinning your spindle, this is actually synchronized uh, movement to the spindle. So it uses gerbil jog and it jogs them both at the right rate. Now, what is the right rate? The right rate is based on what in the Python software you set the wire gauge to. I'll go ahead and show you, it's a 22 gauge. So what you're gonna see is when I run the, when I hit the green button, you'll see this one spinning just a little bit, okay? So it is moving. Now, if you wanted to change the direction, while you're in this mode, if you hit this button, let me see, if you hit this button here, it, what does it do? Oh, uh, it, if you look at the screen up here, you see these two arrows right here? That's telling you which direction this, the x-axis is gonna go when you're jogging it manually with the green button. And you can change that direction by hitting the, the, the hold button here. Okay, you see that it changed. Now it's going to go to the left. Okay, and then I put it back in the idle mode there and I can run it again. Now it's going to go back. All right, now let's go ahead and change the wire gauge. Bigger wire gauges require that you move X more while you're spinning. So there's a key in here. If you cl click the help menu again, you can see the wire gauge choice is an A for, for AWG. And you put this in and you type in 12. Okay, so now we're, we're hooked on and it says up here we're using 12 gauge wire and this is the diameter of 12 gauge wires, 0.083. So you, what you'll see is when I'm jogging it, this, this um, um, coupler will spin a lot faster than it was before. And the x-axis is moving a lot faster than it was as well. Okay, that's moving it, that's just operating the machine manually. Now you can also control it from the keyboard. Um, and it tells you the keyboard commands here. So small moves are lowercase i, j, k, and l, which is, you know, common for gameplay. And big moves, uh, faster moves, are the capital letters. So if I hit um, a j, you'll see it moving like that speed. Or if I hit like a capital L, it's going to move that, that fast. Okay. Oops, I hit too many. Ah, stop it. <laughs> okay. All right, now let's move it. Let's go ahead and scroll, move it all the way back over here. And kind of get it over towards the home position. All right, now you can't really see, but we're kind of lined up. The spindle will be, you know, right here. So we got it all kind of lined up here. So if you want to zero out the machine, hit a Z over here, and you'll see that it put position and turns all back down to zero. Um, there's a couple more keys over here. The less than key moves X to zero. So let's say I move, let's say, I, let's say I'm winding a coil or something and I'm over here and I want to go back to the zero position. I can move back. And you got to see there how fast it actually moves when it's, that's the, um, that's the uh, the speed of of not not homing speed, but that's the rapid. That's the rapid speed. It does go pretty fast. You can also in here just type in regular gerbil commands. I mean uh, G code. So if I do like um, I'm in inch mode now. So let's go ahead and move over three inches. You can just type in X three here, and so you get to see that it it moves over that. That's the speed of the rapid. I can also, I'm in absolute mode now, which is a, a G90. So if I want to go back, I'm in absolute mode, so I got to go back to X equals zero. So you see that this is the, the, the real speed of this axis here, which is, which is pretty good. 
And I'll go ahead and rotate the, the y-axis is the spindle here. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate it, rotate it one, to one, one turn. And I have it geared and all the ratios set up so that y is actually reading out turns. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and manually turn it over to here. And I'll put that thing right about there so you can see that this is, this is zero there. And I'm going to move it back to zero again. So I'm at x equals zero, and I'm going to go ahead and zero the whole thing out. Okay, so that's zero, zero, we're in the home position. So let's go ahead and, and do a, a, um, a, a um, uh, what is it, uh, a relative move, which is, no, not relative. Yeah, no, not, li not rapid. What is it? It is, uh, what the heck do they call that? Absolute and relative. No, it's it's G, G's oh G one, yeah that yeah I'm not, yeah I'm just getting a little confused, blabbing on. All right, so I'm in G one, which means that it's going to uh, respond to the key the speed. So if I do an X, let's say an X four, and a Y twenty, that's going to move X over four, and it's going to rotate the spindle Y uh, twenty times. Okay, so let's say that that was one of the layers of my coil, and then I change the wiring and all that, and then I want I want my X to go back to zero. And let's just try that again, so we can see the count here actually goes up to twenty. So that was X four Y twenty. So here we go. Whoops, I got a zero when I get it back over there. All right. So I'm back to zero, and I'm going to do X, 4, Y, 20. So it's going to rotate 20, and okay, so you can see that that worked. So let's go ahead and zero it back. I want to go ahead and show you... Um, Let's go ahead and move back, but I'm going to show you another feature of Gerbil 1.1. It, it allows you to do real-time feed overrides. And if you look at the, the help screen here, feed override is this override speed, and it's a plus and minus. So what I can do is I'm going to go ahead and tell it to go back to X0, which is going to move this axis back to 0, but I'm going to go in Y another 20. Okay, So this is, oops, not 40. So this is another 20. Um, let's, let's do that again. X zero, X zero, no, it's, I'm in, um, yeah, I'm in absolute. So I got to go X zero, Y 20. So that's going to move this back, but it's going to rotate this in the right direction. So it's basically like another layer in my coil, but I'm going to exercise the feed control, which is the plus and minus on your keyboard. Well, I didn't do that right. Um, <laughs> shoot, I'm getting confused on my on my G code. Oh, I'm in G1. Oh, I'm in G1. I got to do... All right, I got to be back in G0. Okay, let's do this again. I want G1, and I want G... Yeah, G90. I'm getting confused. All right, let's try again. All right, I'm going to zero this out, and I'm going to do X4, Y20. Here we go. Now we're going to do the feed override. So I'm, going to, I'm running it really slow, and then I can speed it back up again while it's running. Now, what you saw there is I had a little stall in my my Y spindle. And that's a this is a problem with this spindle. It's also a problem with the motor driver. There's a lot of problems with this. So I can't run that spindle that fast when I'm running the X-axis that slow. It's it's kind of goofy. 
but let's let's do a, a, a representative one. I'll show you how fast it runs when you're running some smaller gauge wire. Um, I will bring this back over here and let's go ahead and say we got a winding that's like a hundred turns. So I'm going to zero this out and let's say I want to do, let's say my bobbin is, let's say my bobbin is like one inch wide. So we're going to rotate around a one inch wide bobbin. So we got X is one and then we're going to do a Y of 100. So that's going to go 100 turns, but it's only going to move an inch in the, in the X direction. I'm going to zero out my, my meter here, and then I'm going to run it. Okay, and you can, you can see that this is spinning because this thing is actually rotating. Now, all right, so I can change my speed over right here, and I can actually get that going pretty fast. So I wasn't able to spin it this fast when I'm running X really slow. And I think that's a problem with the way that the hardware uh, for on the Kerbal board, the motor driver is not running that stepper very efficiently. But these are just little nuances of this machine. That's about, about as fast as I want to run the spindle. But you can see I counted up to 100 and I was running that spindle pretty fast. Um, so what else is in here? Uh, wire choice. Um, oh, you can also uh, wind, you can completely manually wind a, a transformer on here by just using the green button, which says a synchronized move. Um, you can change the speed at which the synchronizing runs. Okay, if you look up here, there's an L on the screen that stands for lead in. You can toggle between. You can toggle the speed between lead in and wind. So if you if you on the if it's W up here, you this spindle will actually go a lot faster when you're when you're winding. Okay. Again, you change this axis here how far it moves based on the rotation of this on the wire gauge that you're using. Okay, let's take a look at some other things I've done. This is manual speed control for the, the machine, I call it. I've also written the, um, some a uh, lot of Python code to, to generate the turns ratio. Um, it's, a, it's a transformer designer. I'm not going to go into this in this video, but we will um, talk about that in future video. But I'm going to go ahead and show you a transformer. This is kind of what, a, if you want to do a transformer, this is a 300 volt high voltage power transformer with a five volt, uh, a, a five volt um, a secondary as well as a 6.3. So you'd use this for like a guitar amplifier. And what you do, you write this Python code here and you basically put in these four lines. Uh, you specify the primary and you specify the windings. But so basically these are the windings that you're gonna have. Then down here you create a transformer object and you put in the, the um, you put the windings in a, in a list um, such that they're in the order at which you want to wind them onto the onto the bobbin, and you put in the circular mills per amp. I'm not going to go into all this down here, but this thing is going to fly, find the right flux density, and it's going to compute, and it's going to print out a report, and then it's going to generate some G code. All right, and if I run this thing, it prints out this big report. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and output this to a temporary file, and then we'll we'll um, look at that file. So here are the requirements that you typed in. My designer also picks the uh, EI core, um, or actually you pick the EI core that you have, and you all can also put in the wire selections that you do have. And you can have it pick the size of this as well as the wire gauges, but... Typically, if you're kind of like reusing laminations, you choose the, the VA for the laminations you have. So here's the, the one that it computed. It's a 50 VA transformer. Flux density is here, blah, blah, blah. It goes on down. Oh, excuse me. It shows you a bunch of stuff. But here's the windings. So it's a big table. So here's the first the first secondary. It's a uh, 5 volt, a 2 amp, and 19 turns. <coughs> it's able to do that in one layer and there's 31 turns per layer of 18 gauge wire all right and it figures out 
all the different things down here and ultimately what's going to happen at full load the v out is 4.97 6.229 and the output voltage on this high voltage secondary is 3 300 volts okay so this this design is really nice um it also comes down and gives you how the bobbin's going to get laid out and it told you, tells you the winding stack and the stack height um and what's else oh and it goes and shows you the g-code down below so what we can do is actually import that g-code we can tell this python code to run my machine and load those winding information into the machine so i can go ahead and do that here what it's doing is it's going to run my machine again and if you hit a w here it's going to show you that winding table and if you want to actually wind one of these things like let's say we wanted to wind the um, the primary, okay, which is winding number two. So uh, uh, you you can just hit a capital W here and you tell it I want to wind number two, and it's going to tell you what it's going to do here. So it's going to you end up it tells you exactly what to do. Position for wind, you're going to use 18 gauge, um, 24 gauge wire. You need to zero the gerbil. So what that means is you got to go ahead and move the move the um, move the gerbil back over to where it's supposed to go. So let's say we're here and you want to zero the gerbil. So we're going to zero this and then we're going to zero the counter. Okay, there's the zero the counter. And then you want to wind the lead in. So what you're going to do is put your bobbin on here. You know, you put, potentially have some, you know, insulation. You're going to wind one turn or so and get your lead-ins all straightened out. So we'll go ahead and do that. And you can see that I put two turns on it here. And also, actually I put 1.8 turns on it up here, um, which is fine. And then once you're ready, you just hit a Y. Now what it's gonna do is it's gonna go ahead and wind that guy up. Now this, this has 421 turns of 24 gauge wire. And it's going to basically step through, and this little star over here is telling you um, which um, which layer it's actually working on. Now this is running in G1 mode right now, so I can change the speed of this by toggling it up. So if I'm getting a little impatient, I can go ahead and spin my transformer up to full speed. And what it's going to do is put 421 turns on this. Um, this layer of our power transformer. It's exciting, isn't it? <laughs> this little part of this code, it's, this is like days of extra work on getting this thing tuned up so that it works cool. And I did spend a lot of time. If you do have a problem, you can hit the, you can hit the, the hold button. And you can see the gerbil went into hold zero, and then you can fix your problem, and then you can put it back on, and you can resume to where you, where you took off. And if you're winding a little too fast, you can slow it back down again while it's running. It's working really quite well. Well, I hope we end up on 421 turns. <laughs> no, I, I think I think we will. If we didn't, it's because we didn't start the uh, the bobbin in the right place or my magnet was in the wrong spot or something like that. But I think it's going to work. So you can kind of compare down here. This is 320, uh, you know, by 330 up here. And this turns turns up here is actually sitting at 346. So we're almost there. Also, it rinds the last layer in a complete layer and you can change that in the code as well so you can see that the x is actually moving faster on this last layer because it's going to wind a complete layer all right so gerbil reports back that we did 421 turns and our counter down here reports 421 turns okay that's it for now all this code is in uh my github site uh you can go over there it's a uh, a GitHub at Holla2040, H-O-L-L-A-2040. And I've got all this code checked in under the power transformer. You can also, um, 
uh, like I said, I'll be talking about the power transformer uh, designer in the future. Um, it, I, I did work on that a lot. I probably put about a week's of time into getting that to work right. And that runs as a command line option, uh, like you saw there, or you can run it actually in a Jupyter Notebook. That wraps it up for today. This has been a pretty long video. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, uh, I'll see you next time.